Good morning, Facebook. It's good to be with you again. Michael Puppis coming from uh, my house here in Waterville to Facebook as we get ready for another episode of the 23 Podcast. It's good to have you with us this morning. Live from Perry's. Good morning, Father. How are you doing today? I am well. Very well. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's actually overcast, but it's still very nice. It's a good spring day, but I've been conscious that we must be behind. Normally, lilacs bloom for Mother's Day. Oh, you know what? In my backyard, we have a, are they bushes or trees, first of all? There are both kinds. Most of them have bushes, but sometimes if you go to a nursery and say you want a lilac tree, there is such a thing, but usually they are large bushes. So they're coming in in our backyard, and actually Claire and I were just commenting yesterday that they should be here uh, ready to go in time for Mother's Day. We're hoping. I mean, I, I'm seeing that. A few days away, but mine, mine probably will not bloom by Mother's Day unless, unless it gets really warm for the next few days. Which it's not going to. No. No. Anyway, good to have everybody with us. Thanks for tuning in as we get to uh, get ready here to record another episode of the 23 podcast for the fifth Sunday of Easter. And we're also celebrating Mother's Day this weekend. So we'll be talking about both of those things a little bit on the podcast today. Okay. And while we're doing planning, uh, how long, how many times now have we gone live video? You know, well, we started, We, if you remember, we started the first live video still together. Good in my yeah. office and that was i don't know six weeks by, ago by the way it's much better being remote <laughs> you like being it, away it, from me distance from you yeah yeah that's that's fair I, I don't blame you and but uh what number podcast is this this is number one oh you're putting me on the spot number 148 i believe okay we said we're going to celebrate for 150. yeah you still have some time to get me a gift so that's good that's not the way I meant to celebrate. Oh, well, I was, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. So anyway, so as we get ready for uh, the podcast, what's, I know you said uh, this morning at Mass that today is your sister Judy's birthday. Yeah, today is May 5th, El Cinco de Mayo, but that has nothing to do with it. But J Judy is uh, turning 50, to, I'm sorry, she was born in 1950. Oh. Uh-oh, I just gave it away. Wait, <laughs> but anyway, she was born May 5th. Uh, I remember when she turned 55 and we celebrated and this was, uh, 2005. Yeah. So on 05, 05, 05, Judy turned 55 and we had her birthday party at 5 55 AM. That's very early for a party. Party. It was so cool. I went to Delphus. I stayed with my other sister overnight, Judy. Judy had planned this party herself, but she didn't know who was coming. So I came in and we met this little place. It was basically kind of a truck stop, but they had breakfast pizza. Yeah. Wait, you had and, a party at a truck stop? Well, it was like a truck stop. Oh, okay. it was, oh, yeah, it's called The Point. And uh, uh, they had breakfast pizza and they had uh, donuts and coffee. Yeah. So we celebrated her birthday at 5.55 a.m. I left. I was pastor in Mansfield at the time. I drove two hours back and got back in time for my nine o'clock appointment. That's a pretty efficient day. Yeah. And Judy was a teacher at the time, so she went and taught a whole day of school. I think we were all pretty tired come three o'clock in the afternoon. Sure. I was going to say that 2005, that would have been that same upcoming, if it was spring going into summer when we started Blessed John the 23rd. It was the same year. Yeah. Um, and uh, in fact, by that time, I was already appointed because by May, by May, I knew I was leaving Mansfield. You and I hadn't met yet, though. Oh, no, we'll never forget that date. <laughs> when, when was it? You and I met in July of 2005. We, we exchanged emails and we met at uh, Bob Evans. We did. I was the one who wore the carnation. The, so that you no, you were, it was your collar. You had a clerical collar on. It, it was, oh, you looked younger in your picture. <laughs> it was the best blind date I've ever been on. Yeah. And then we auditioned later on over at St. Pat's Feather Downs. Actually, on my birthday that year, we auditioned. Happy, yeah. happy birthday to me. Anyway, well, happy birthday to Judy. Yep. Oh, and, does she uh, watch the podcast? Does she listen? I don't know if she even knows the podcast exists. Wow, well, that's great. But she All does right. watch the podcast. I know that. So. Oh, good. 
Well, mass over podcast. She's got her priorities straight. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get this podcast started for the fifth Sunday of Easter. Welcome to the 23 Podcast, everybody. Michael Pupp is here with our good friend and our pastor, Father Herb Weber. Thank you so much for being with us as we get ready for another Sunday of the Easter season. This weekend, we're celebrating the fifth Sunday of Easter. Father, what's going on in your world today? Hello, everybody. Let's see what is going on. I love the Easter season. It moves by very quickly every year. Um, Last week was Good Shepherd Sunday. Often, Good Shepherd Sunday is on Mother's Day. This year, uh, Good Shepherd Sunday was a week before Mother's Day. So we have an an equally powerful gospel reading that uh, is a powerful image for mothers as well. In fact, uh, the gospel, when you hear it, is one that many, many people have chosen to read at a funeral of their mother. Uh, And in a very positive sense, it's not it's not meant to. And I don't say that to be morbid, but when they think about their mother, they think, uh, you know, the mother takes care of them and goes ahead, goes ahead of them and prepares a place for them. Sure. Sure. It's a beautiful reading. And in addition to recording the podcast, we're also live on Facebook today, as we have been the last few weeks. Uh, Joining us right now, uh, good morning to Bernie and to Paul and to Thomas, who are are watching right now. It's good to have you guys with us. What else else would you do on a Tuesday morning except watch a podcast? (laughs) Yeah, there's really, there's nothing else to do these days. So just watch a podcast. And I'll tell you, I don't know if you've gone into the Apple podcast app or any other places where podcasts are. There are plenty to choose from these days. No, I, 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 select very carefully what I watch. I did watch the wonderful, wonderful uh, video of Paul Makar being discharged from Wood County Hospital. Oh, yeah, that was great. You know, for close to a month, about three, three and a half weeks. Yeah. Um, he had COVID. He was on a ventilator for two full weeks from the Sunday before Easter to the Sunday after Easter. Mm-hmm. And uh, he was discharged last Wednesday. I went up or went down to Bowling Green I was part of the group that was standing outside. Actually, I was in my car most of the time, and I stood at a good distance from people. But the the video is really good because it was done inside the hospital when the hallways were totally lined up with all of the hospital personnel. And I was amazed how many were able to do that. Yeah. And cheering him and applauding as as he was taken out on the on the gurney because there he was right put into an ambulance and taken to a rehab center. Uh, he's got to get his strength back. But I talked to him on the phone. He sounds good. And we're just, we're so thankful. We're so thankful to hear a success story, a positive ending. Amen. And if you'd like to see that video, we did post that we shared that video from Wood County Hospital on our parish Facebook page. So you can go check that out uh, on Facebook if you'd like to see and it. And you don't know Paul Makar. Paul is kind of the uh, usher-in-chief at the 11 o'clock mass every Sunday. And a lot of people know his kindness and his his good smile and his wonderful laugh. Mm-hmm. Very much yeah. so. So um, as you said, this weekend's Mother's Day. We have a couple of surprises in store. Are you tell they are? No, they're a No, surprise. it's a surprise. That's the whole point. So, uh, But we do have a couple of surprises we're working on for this weekend for mass. So make sure... Uh, that you tune in and have your mom watch Mass with you this weekend, too. It should be great. I have noticed over the years that Mother's Day is a a family day. And I think mothers say to their kids, you know, grown kids who live elsewhere, uh, what should we get you for Mother's Day? And they say, come, she, mother says, come to Mass with me in the morning. Yeah. (laughs) So sometimes the, the sons and daughters look happy to be in church. Sometimes well, I better do this. Actually, uh, I have noticed that attendance usually is up on Mother's Day in church. No no doubt about the, it. This is interesting. In the history of our parish, which is only 15 Mother's Days. Uh, is that the, how you're counting these days? That's how I count. Yeah. The first couple of years, actually, our attendance went down on Mother's Day because people would go elsewhere to be with their mothers. Sure. sure. Now it's going up because they come here to be with their mothers. Right. right. But, but we're more established now. And a lot of the moms are going to church at our place. Yeah. So are we ready to jump into the reading? Hey, why don't we jump into the reading? Okay. A little background. This is fifth Sunday 
of Easter, not fifth Sunday after Easter, fifth Sunday of Easter. Sure. First three weeks were stories, accounts of resurrection. Mm -hmm. Last week was the Good Shepherd Sunday. And now we get into what's called the farewell discourse. So in John's gospel, there's the Last Supper when Jesus washed the feet, Mm -hmm. chapter 13. And then you get to chapter 18. uh, uh, There is uh, the the betrayal in the garden and Jesus is arrested and goes into the Passion account, the crucifixion. The chapters in between, chapter 14, 15, 16, and 17. Those chapters are called the farewell discourse or the final discourse or the last supper discourse. And basically it's just a a series of conversations Jesus is having with his apostles and saying, I'm leaving, but don't be sad. And he promises to send the Holy spirit. He, he says, I give you the gift of peace. That's where he also talks about the state connected. Like I am the vine, you're the branches. All of that comes during that time. Sure. So this is chapter 14. So it's the first of those four chapters and it's verses one to 12. So this is the beginning of the fair, farewell discourse. And Michael, it's broken into two parts. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read the part uh, that goes through, I am the vine, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And you're going to pick up after that, aren't you? I am. Thank you for volunteering. Yeah. All right. Okay, a reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God. Have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, then you will also know my father. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Master, show us the father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you for so long a time, you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I am in the father, and the father is in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who dwells in me is doing his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe because of the works themselves. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes in me will do the works that I do, and will do greater ones than these, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And the reason I broke it that way is because I mentioned earlier that this gospel is very frequently chosen for funerals. And the part that is read for a funeral is the part that I read aloud. Yeah. The part with that whole conversation with Philip that comes later. So we really have two sections, and that's why I I like to choose to um, read it in two parts so people can see. Like, it's a conversation, and then it goes on to a second part of the conversation. And this Sunday we get both. So let's just talk about if you were leaving, if you were going to be gone, whether it's because you're going on a trip or you're leaving your job or you're leaving home to go to college or you had a terminal disease and you knew you were leaving your family, Mm -hmm. what would be the words that you would want to give? I often think about that. You know, some people nowadays, they, they write notes, you know, after my death, read this. Sure. Uh, some, sometimes they make videos. I think I should do that. I'll, okay. call, it a, I'll it's, call it a podcast. I was going to say, we've got at least seven weeks worth of videos here now. So it's, yeah. a, good, it's a head start, at least. You could you could show one every, every day of the week yeah, during the time of mourning. No, <laughs> I think, what would I actually want to do? Uh, and I'm. 
I often think about this. I would want to reassure the people behind that they're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. I would want to give them something and maybe nothing that I hadn't already given. Like, please remember what I stood for or what I was about. I would probably want to somehow uh, make sure that they can handle living without me. Uh, and certainly if we're talking about Mother's Day, um, I can recall, I did not see it myself, but my, my mother told me the story. It was a woman that she knew, a young mother who had a number of kids, six or seven kids, and she was dying of cancer, and it was terminal. This was some years ago, so they pretty much knew that at that time there was nothing they could do. Mm -hmm. The oldest kids were probably teenagers, but barely 16 at most. And my mother said that she saw this woman in the grocery store with the two oldest daughters, and the oldest kids were daughters, uh, teaching them how to shop, how really? to buy how to buy groceries. Now, this is what you want to buy. And this is what you look for in the meat. And I remember my mother being so impressed that this woman, instead of sitting at home and feeling sorry for herself, was trying the best way to prepare her kids to live without her. Now, by the way, those kids are grown and they are probably grandparents or maybe even great grandparents by this time. Uh, and they all did very well. But what a legacy uh, that she said, do this, do this in my absence. So in this gospel today, Jesus is saying, don't let your hearts be troubled. Now, yeah, I'm going to be gone, but don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm going and then I'm coming to prepare for you. And I think this is why many people choose this when they have a parent die. Mm -hmm. I'm coming to prepare a place for you. And that's sort of what we always think about parents are they're the ones who have gone through things before we have, and uh, and somehow they have a wisdom or insight that we don't have. You know, just this past Sunday was uh, the two-year anniversary, if you call it an anniversary, of my dad's passing. And so throughout the last week or so, there were a lot of events that kind of led up to his death. And uh, you kind of start to think about all the things that kind of led up to that. Actually, starting with my daughter Emery's birthday, because her birthday is in April. So the last time that he was at my house was for her birthday party. And then, you know, you and I and the rest of the team had traveled to Dallas for a conference when I got a phone call that I needed to get back into town. So you start thinking about all of the, di the different steps that are leading up to kind of the, the final event. And as I was reading this, I was wondering, you know, after Jesus was gone, after the, the crucifixion and his death and the resurrection, did they think in those same ways? Did they they recall, you know, a year ago, you know, or two years ago, this was happening? Hey, do you remember when we were out fishing on the boat and, you know, he, he came out on the water, he was walking on the water and remember what Peter did? You know, he thought he could do it too, but then, you know, he fell right in. Or, you know, were they reminiscing and remembering the things that led up to some of these events? Well, reminiscing, remembering is important. Scriptural, scripturally speaking, when you use the word remember, it's more than our remembrance. The last couple of weeks being at home more, I've gone through a lot of my old photo albums, pictures through the years, mm -hmm. of pictures when I was a young priest and had long hair. Well, you still got the long hair thanks to the COVID-19 pandemic. But it's not a, not as dark as it used to be, <laughs> nor is it as long as it used to be. But anyway, going through those pictures, you remember. But scripturally speaking, especially in the New Testament, when they talk about do this in remembrance of me, it's a different sense of remembering. Yeah, It's like being present to it again. And so, so Jesus is basically saying farewell and I am present. It's both and. And so don't let your hearts be troubled. I'm still with you. And then, of course, I love the conversation with Thomas. This is the same one that's called Doubting Thomas, you know, just a few uh, a few chapters later, sure. about five, five, six chapters later. But it's this, the Thomas says, how can we know where you're going? How can we go with you when we don't know where you're going? It's sort of like if you if we know where you are, we can put it in our GPS. But if we don't know where you are, how are we going to get there? Yeah. Uh, I never give people directions anymore how to find my house. I just give them the address. 
and then they put it in their GPS. Sure. So, so Jesus said, okay, I'll tell you both. This is how you get here, but I'll also tell you what my address is. And it is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, so there. Yeah. <laughs> That's hard to put into this. I don't know how to type that. <laughs> you're, you're, he held up his phone in case you're wondering. Right. Okay. Uh, if, yeah, you can't just say that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and your phone will get you there. But think about those three words. I am the way. The way usually means the path, the road. Yeah. I talked about that, the road to Emmaus. I am the truth. Wow, that's with a capital T. And, of course, we have that whole dialogue uh, with Pilate, you know, what is truth? Mm. You know, so like, hey, what is truth? It's anybody's truth, you know. And then I am the life. Uh, in Latin, they're all, they all begin with the letter V, ego sum, via, veritas, et vita. And it's just a beautiful phrase to say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, you're talking about, uh, you used to give people, you know, directions to get to your house, and now you just give the address. In some ways, we kind of take for granted getting places, don't we? You know, it's, it's so simple now that we just put it into our phone, and our phone takes us where we want to go. Um, but I, I, go ahead. I remember even you know the Rand McNally Atlas. You know, speaking to my dad, he always had he was Mister Atlas. He always had the the Atlas in the back of the car, and it was it was almost an accomplishment when you arrived somewhere because it wasn't always obvious how to get there. You had to kind of figure it out, and if if something got in the way, you had to look for another route to get there. And now our phones just reroute us. So, and and that's what I was going to say. I. I do use uh, GPS at times, but I prefer a map. And part of the reason is if you just follow GPS kind of blind, you never learn the way. You know, you you have to, you know, afterwards like, oh, I got here, but I don't remember. I just turned when it's the voice, that cute little voice said, turn here. <laughs> and if you don't turn, she says, dummy, I told you to turn there. <laughs> but don't, she'll take good care of you and find another place for you to turn. Oh, yeah, sometimes. Uh, one moment rerouting yeah <laughs> yeah uh jesus is is basically you said taking care of us jesus takes care of us but they must have felt like first of all he had it was very you know the ominous spirit jesus after the last supper predicted you know even in john's gospel said you know this is going to happen and now he didn't spell it out exactly the way we understand it now but you know this this is what's happening, and I'm being betrayed. He he said, you know, and Peter, you're going to deny me, and all this stuff that they didn't comprehend, and and yet uh, he still was able to reach out to them and say, don't worry. Now, what I would recommend everybody does before Sunday, please pick up your Bible, read chapters 14, 15, 16, and 17 straight through. And if you think that you don't have time for that to do that, I ask one question. How many reruns of NCIS can you handle? You know, do this instead. Uh, you know, we always know what show you're binge watching. I don't binge watch NCIS. Oh. I just oh. it's kind of a, it's a quirky show that I enjoy because I like the character interaction. And uh, but I, but I do use that as an example, because when I say something like that, People know what I'm referring to. Sure. So, so whatever their their weakness is, sit down and just read it through. And if you don't read line by line, but at least follow the the paragraphs, the uh, the pericopes of what the various sections are. So, um, can you repeat those chapters one one time for those that were were uh, listening but not really listening? Okay, chapter fourteen, where we start today, beginning of the farewell discourse, chapter fourteen. Chapter 15, chapter 16, and chapter 17. All right, you heard it, folks. Teacher, the teach uh, assigned us four chapters of at-home reading. Yeah, and I will test everybody on it next week. <laughs> uh, there's enough homeschooling going on in this house right now that I don't need my own assignments, but for you, I'll do it. Okay, by the way, the following Sunday, which is May 17th, we are still in chapter 14. The following Sunday after that, which is the seventh Sunday, uh, we're, we're not going to be reading it. It would have been chapter 17, 
but we'll be celebrating ascension. the asc ascension of the Lord. Yeah. yeah. So, so there's really two or three, you know, the places where they still observe ascension on the Thursday, you would you would have three weeks in a row of the farewell discourse. You know, thinking back to those three qualifiers that Jesus gives in this Sunday's gospel reading, you know, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. Th that is something in and of itself that I think we could reflect on and that will give us much needed comfort in this time. Um, I I've said this before on the podcast. I, I feel as though in my own faith life, sometimes when I'm starting to get lukewarm, I realize it's because I'm not really committing fully to what I really believe, you know? And so if, if sometimes I want to just kind of put my faith on the back burner, am I really living my life in a way that believes that Jesus is the way and the truth and the life? Because if I believe those three things, how could I want anything else? You know, for some people, NCIS, for others, any, any other distraction will do. Um, but how could I want anything else to um, bring me joy or happiness? The, the only caveat I have, uh, the way, the truth, and the life, is you have to be very careful what we mean by that. Um, the way, I think, speaks for itself, and life, well, I, again, I don't think everybody understands what life really means. They think it's just uh, perpetual motion, but life is much more profound. But that middle one, the truth, Truth is always beyond our grasp. Truth with a capital T. We cannot fully comprehend truth. We can get a sense of it. We can be attracted to it. But for somebody who says, well, I've got truth, I want to say, well, be careful because, you know, it's bigger than you are. Truth is divine, and we can't hold divine in our hands. Divine is bigger than we are. Do you think it's something that we can constantly be seeking, though? Oh, sure. Yeah, definitely. We, we have to seek truth. We have to. Uh, and that's the other problem. When somebody says, well, I've got truth, they kind of hold it like a, a possession. It's rather it's it's like we're always in motion. And that's why putting this together, I am the way the image, the way is always about movement. It's not just like I found the path, but I'm following the path. Sure. And the life is not like, oh, I got life in a, a bottle. No, I'm living it. You know, it's it's like all of these are movements. Well, thank you. I think that's a great uh, way to end this week's episode of the podcast as we continue these Easter celebrations and celebrate our moms this weekend for Mother's Day. So we look forward to seeing you for Mass. We'll be live from the church at 10 a.m. this Sunday. And uh, for the next couple of weeks as well, we'll still be from the church until uh, we find out what will be in store for us next. Yeah, and who knows uh, what's on the horizon, but hey, we, we stay connected even though we're not able to see each other. All right, thanks everybody. We'll see you next week on the 23 Podcast. God bless you. Well, the, All right, there we are. Another uh, uh, Another podcast in the works. Okay, so we are still live. We're still live. Anything else you want to say? Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, now, meanwhile, back to reading chapters 14, 15, 16, 17. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to go get my Bible right now. And you know me, I'm an overachiever, so I've got to get it done ahead of time. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Uh, other people tuning in. Uh, Anita and Abby are watching right now. And Deb. Well, well, hi to the people who live in defiance. Not in Not defiant people. But city of defiance, yes. in Fort Defiance. I understand. I understand what you're saying. And Michelle is watching right now, and Denise as well. It's good to hear from you guys. So thanks for joining us. Have a great day, everybody. We'll see you next week. Okay. Bye.